Listen. You know, if it was Pastor Brian that was preaching, now you say he's looking for tithes. I am not a pastor. I don't have a church. I am telling you what I have done, what I did, that brought me to where I am. 10% of it, and I gave to God. The other ones, let me tell you, your passion determines your portion. What you are passionate about, there are lots of young people here that want to make money. I want to be rich. Why do you want to? I want to let you know that God does not have a problem with blessing his children. If you know what it is to be a child of God, you would understand what I'm talking about. One day, we're about going out and um, my children were supposed to get into the bulletproof land cruiser and I'll sit in the other car with my wife and we got down and my daughters were already in the Rolls Royce and they said daddy this is where we're going to sit go to the other car and they closed the door while I was standing I said only my child can do that to me only my child can do that to me so if you have the understanding that you are a child of God you should never lack listen to me because our God owns the silver and the gold everything all the banks sir he owns them he doesn't have a problem with releasing it to his children but the problem he has is what are we going to do with it I want to let you know young people that every level at every stage that you find yourself today it is a test God is looking at you let me see what this boy will do at this with this level God entrusted me with the first 1.2 million and he was looking if I was going to have more girlfriends he was on the side looking if I will eat his own portion It is a test. He doesn't have a problem with blessing us. He doesn't have a problem at all. As a matter of fact, this is the time where God is looking for young people to empower for this end time agenda. What is their purpose? Why do you want to make it in life? It's a major reason why God will bless you or not bless you. Those days, when I'll come out in church, if I enter any church, get into any church today, I start looking. Is there roof? Oh, I start looking for a problem to solve. So God knew that at every point in time, I was looking for money to populate heaven and depopulate hell. At every point in time, I had the passion for people. I see widows and I'm, I feel so bad. A child that can't pay school fees, and I feel so bad. I'm looking for money to give the person. That was the reason why I wanted to make money, not to show off on social media, not to look for who to intimidate, not to look for who to oppress. Your passion and the reason why you want to succeed matters a lot to God. And it's the reason why you will succeed or you will not succeed. By the grace of God, all glory be to God. God has used us to build churches for him. The last one we did in a state is undeniably the best church in that state. Everything, swimming pool, large screens, comfort chairs, to the glory of God. To the glory of God. Why will God not bless me? Why? Why? As I leave Ghana, I'm flying to a state in the northern part of Nigeria. I have widows waiting for me. I have orphans waiting for me. Why will God not bless me? We go around prisons to the glory of God reaching out to prisoners. We go around the prisons, give medication, mattresses, all manner to the glory of God. Touching lives. 
That is ministry, sir. People, listen, there are people that might never, ever, ever read the Bible. Your life is the only Bible they will get to read. And hear me, you know, most of the things that are written down, I'm not even talking about it because uh, the Lord is just taking me through different dimensions. That means there are people here that he wants me to talk to and hear what I'm talking about. Passion for the kingdom. I have seen strange honor at a very young age. Those days when my pastor will come. Hear me, your prophet is for your prophet. Your prophet has what you need. He doesn't need anything from you. Your prophet is for your prophet. I remember those days when my father and the Lord would come. He would visit just. Then we were still starting up. I would struggle. Drive, look for people. who will put rub on the ground. Red carpet. Put flowers. Honor him. Carry, out, carry the Bible. And all of that. And one of the days when he was leaving, we were driving, we were in a convoy, and we were leaving. When we got to the entrance to leave town, and he called me, he said, Son, men will honor you. Systems will honor you. I have seen strange honor at a very young age. I was appointed on the board of Igbenidion University, the first private university prestigious in Nigeria and I got on the board and I sat down and I looked around former governors former ministers stakeholders major people and I was a tiny boy the youngest in their midst appointed also on several boards Namdi Azikiwe University I got there and I was privileged to be there even with my mentor Dr. Cosmos Maduka I have seen strange honors by submitting. I want to advise young people this morning. One of the greatest insurance you can have is to get yourself a spiritual cover. Pastor Brian, that's why I celebrate God for what you are doing. Get yourself, Pastor Brian flew all the way to Nigeria to just come and have his hand, hands laid on his head. I said, this man is very wise. No wonder. That's why I said to him, I said, you have become my brother. Because I saw traits and things that I was doing. Flew all the way from London. The prophetic cover. There is nothing that gives you a guarantee like it. For a young man that is just coming up and you don't have a spiritual father. You are like a young man, like my father and the Lord will say. They have kept to climb a... 26 story building and you are using the staircase but those of us that have a spiritual cover we enter into the lift life is made easy your father gives you feathers to fly who you associate yourself determines what you surround surround you who you surround yourself with determines what you surmount as a young person ensure that you connect yourself with a spirit under a spiritual cover hear me it still pays anybody that wants to tell you that it does not pay to serve god remember me don't forget i told you i speak in tongues and i speak in cash to the glory of god there are still people hear me there is a lot to do for the kingdom of god i answered a call a friend of mine from the u.s i called him for something and he was telling me pastor he said he just bought a church and he was going to convert it to a club a church was bought by an unbeliever and he was going to convert it to a club. Hear me, sir. Hear me, ma. That is why God is looking to raise billionaires from our midst. 
when such a person brings one million dollars to buy that church, you come out and you bring 3.6 billion. And you come to Ghana and ask pastor, pastor, give me a young man that is on fire for God. And he gives you, and you take the man of God, fly him to America, keep him there, give him money, and ministry is on. And the souls are won for God. Souls are won for God. Pastor, there is a ministry is money. Ministry needs money. I am telling you the reason why God needs to raise people. By the message of God, God has used us and is using us in various little ways. I was, I think in our Christmas carol in the East, we had young gospel artist come. I'm very, very passionate about people that are in the gospel because we're at the point where a lot of them are leaving the choir and going to sing worldly songs. We are losing them, sir. And I said to myself, we invested I think close to over, over, over almost 200 million on equipment just we produce the music, give, do videos for them free and push it out. That was the only reason why we started the Stanel Media. We were there in one of the Christmas carols and these people came to minister. A particular group, Mr. M and Revelations, they came to minister and when it got to their point, time to minister, I left. Something took me away but when I left, Somebody called me and said that the fire there is too much. I said, what happened? He said, the Mr. M and Revelation, those people are, they are on fire. They are sitting there. I said, who are they? That morning, I came down the next morning and I was going to have breakfast in the hotel and I saw a young man just walked up to me and knelt down. I said, sir, you missed the administration, but I want you to pray for me. And I looked at him. You know, I get very embarrassed because I'm not a pastor. But I've had general overseers come and say, Sir, please lay hands on me. God said you should lay hands on me. And I took him and we went upstairs to my room with his wife. And I prayed with them. They went under the power. Something happened to them. And all of a sudden, the next week when I left, I was sleeping. And the Lord said to me, I should send a particular amount to them. I called them. The exact amount I sent to them was the exact amount of the rent they were owing. Hold on. The next day, the Lord said to me, gather these things and send to them. Food stuff. And they said to me, sir, for seven days, not a grain of rice to eat. Now, let me tell you something about these guys. There are about 20 something of them. All they do for a living is worship. They lock themselves in a room. Yes, sir. We're there with you. They lock themselves in a room and all they do is worship. I called them again. The Holy Spirit spoke to me, said they should get them to go and get a place. To cut the long story short, these people are landlords, nine bedroom duplex. The whole ground floor worship happens there 24 7, non stop. Hear this. While were they going, while were they worshiping, the Holy Spirit said, ah, I should drop my car. I dropped my car. I can't count many times. I gave them over 15 million, 10 million, 15 million. I can't have lost count. Why? Because I needed them to stand. And guess what? They are making noise abroad now. Sir. Every day they see me, they harass me with money. I run away from them. Daddy, one million naira. They so the young man has given out nine cars to his instrumentalist. Nine cars. Can you imagine if there was nobody that was anointed, both on the head and in the pocket? Can you imagine how the anointing would have turned to annoyance? These people, if you give them the microphone here, sir, 
One minute, everywhere has charged up. One minute. On fire for God. Now conquering the world. Their music, I was in London the other day and I got into a car. They were playing their song. And everywhere, the other day in Turkey, and I go, they were playing their song. I took them, I called them, I said, I am going to give you platforms. I called my father in the Lord, I said, Daddy, Dr. Paul Enenche, the man that has raised people. I called him, I said, Sir, please, I want you to give them a platform to minister. And he gave them the opportunity. They ministered on the Dunamis altar. I called Pastor Biodon Fato Ibo of Koza. And great men of God. Pastor Jerry Eze. And that is how. So as I speak to you now. Level has changed. Level has changed. Hear me sir. Hear me ma. That is the reason why God should bless you. Once you can put your focus. Keep your focus on these things. I want to make a mark for the kingdom. Once it can be your focus, then trust me, God will release resources onto you like never before that you will be so embarrassed. So embarrassed. I was telling somebody, I said, in the last how many years, I have never had a better yesterday. There is no year that my tight last year was better. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Why? God knows that I am too relevant to be wasted. Too needed for the kingdom and kingdom assignments. When we started standard group, sir, one of the covenants I had with God, I said, Lord, bless us with trucks. We are going to write your name. You know, instead of numbering the trucks, truck one, truck two, you know how we name them? Elohim, Adonai, El Gibor, El Shaddai. That was how we name our trucks. I said, Lord, I am going to advertise your name on the land. We will advertise your name on the sea, in the sea. We will have ships that we are going to write it, your name on it. When people see me, I will be a testimony of Jesus. footsteps, the things that I do I am going to take you we will do the things that I do in the secret place I said what I said I'm taking three days, no food, no water the wife said ah daddy I have never done it before, I said you will do it, you will not die, I took them, we flew in a private plane to Joss we got to Joss, all my staff we locked all of them in my house at Joss and we stayed there the first day, the second day, the third day, while everybody was weak, we were on the floor. The song came. My helper, it means my help. My help. My help. Onyinyaka means my help. You are my only help. You are my only help. That song broke out. And that is why today, 
Pastor Brian will send me videos of him in America and playing that song. Bah! The power of God saturates everywhere because he came in the place of deep intercession. Only I count Jesus, you're my only hope. declared it. She said, she said to me, I was listening to that song in America. It said the whole room, the power of God everywhere. It pays to serve God. Make up your mind. When you do what you have not done before, you will see what you have not seen before. Hear me. That person, that uncle you are looking for to help you God can so empower you that your uncle will start looking up to you. That is why I look up to no man. No man on earth. The Bible says, woe unto you that puts your hope on man. Rather, when I meet people that are greater than me, I look for how to add value. I look for how to add value. No matter how small, it's a type of giving that is not popular. There's a saying in my place that says, in Igbo land, they'll say, like, it's more like you don't take a cup of water and put it in an ocean. That is a Yeyesho statement. The only way you can tap from what this prophet carries is by sowing into his life. To connect to the grace that he carries. That is the only way, the easiest way to connect to the raw crude that he carries. Pastor, this is one of my greatest secrets. Whenever I meet people that are where I want to be, instead of looking for how to collect something from them, I look for how to add value. Guess what? The vessels might not be perfect, but the virtue, perfect. When I met Dr. Cosmos Maduka of Koscharis Group, these are men that are loaded. They speak in tongues and they speak in cash. This man of God is a businessman, he's an institution. He goes out every Saturday to go and minister on fire for God. Sir, he picks his bike and he goes and he spins. There's dust everywhere for people to gather and he'll bring up his, his um, what do you call it? Megaphone. And he starts preaching to them about Jesus. A multi-billionaire. Hear me. Here, association is another topic I would have talked about, but there is no time. Who you associate yourself with matters a lot. One day I was with him. Day 10, day 12, 14, 15, 30, 40. He was fasting. A multi-mega billionaire. He owns the franchise for Rolls Royce. Franchise for every BMW. Heavily loaded. Range Rover. Heavily loaded. But on fire for God. And I was with him. I went for a program with him. And he was fasting. I said, sir, is the fasting not too much? And he said to me, he said, sir, Stanley, I need to tell you something today. Don't ever joke with your consecration. That is my own jazz. The 
There's a part of the song that says, Hongungwaragwa, Jesus, my all in all. He said the jazz that he did. Hear me, sir. Thank you. Hear me. This man of God, always fasting, on fire for God. One day I went to see him on Wednesday. They say he doesn't see people on Wednesday. Morning till night, he is, the room is locked, phones off. On fire till the next day. There are people that speak in tongues and speak in cash. And he held me, sir, and he prayed with me and he said, Lord, raise another cosmos Madoka in Stanley. The MD CEO of Access Bank, Herbert Wigwe, no meeting goes on in Access Bank, starts in Access Bank without a prayer. 